Britain have four gymnasts competing in the finals today, including Max Whitlock, double world and double Olympic champion. He's actually got 11 championship titles under his belt. And nobody knows better than him what it takes to be the best. King of the pommel. Never has a British gymnast tasted success quite like Max Whitlock. He is the history maker. Just remarkable what we are witnessing here. But gymnastics is about consistency, execution and perfecting the margins. That consistency comes with relentless preparation, the execution in performance. Complacency is never an option. Invincibility never a given. 2018 saw the highs of a team gold, oh, what a performance. the lows of being flawed, and of course, that pommel. To scalp the Olympic champion is unexpected. And this pommel. Down and out. A very uncharacteristic mistake. Here, gold is merely the expectation. Nothing less will do. His precious pommel awaits. Well, it won't be long before we find out how Max Whitlock gets on and that concept of repetition and training it's known all too well by my guest this evening. Uh, Beth Tweddle, I'm saying this evening, we're live, I don't even know why I'm saying this evening. Uh, Beth Tweddle and Christian Thomas, do you miss the smell of the chalk? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you do a little. You can't stop doing gymnastics even today, oh, can you? Not at that sort of level, I'll tell you what. It takes a, a lot of hard work to feel where them guys are competing right now, so uh, no, I'll, I'll let those, those guys just... I'll leave them to it. Yeah, I've okay. done my years. Well, we are in for a great afternoon of gymnastics. Let's just have a look at the timetable because there's a lot of uh, British interest in here as well. We, we expected Max Whitlock, of course, to be in the Pommel Horse final. Uh, Ellie's in vault and Courtney Tunnock. Courtney Tullock up on rings as well. But Bryn Bevan, um, he's an interesting addition to that pommel final. I think he surprised himself, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he probably did, actually. I, I think over the years now, he's been slowly building up the difficulty throughout this pommel horse routine. We know he's a very good all-rounder as well. Yeah. Um, but he's starting to also become a bit of a specialist on this apparatus and getting into his first European pommel horse final. That's going to uh, definitely give him the boost of, of pushing the, uh, the pommel working into the future. So we wish him all the very best to look for his final. Uh, Ellie Downey did incredibly well in the all-around yesterday, uh, getting the silver, missing out on gold by just 0 0.068. How will she be feeling going into vault final today? Because it must have taken it out of her. It will have done, and it's her third day of competition. But mm. obviously, um, we know that she's a very powerful vaulter. She knows these vaults inside out. So I don't think there'll be any worries with her being able to perform them today. Mm -hmm. Well, here she was uh, yesterday, and this vault got her off, competition off to a flying start. Um, she'll have two vaults to do today, so she'll be mixing it up uh, a little bit. Also, I mentioned Courtney Tullock will be up on rings, and he's a gymnast with the highest difficulty in that rings final, Christian. He is, and he's, again, a gymnast that's been just increasing the difficulty of this routine over the years now, where he's in a position where if he can nail this routine, then he has got a very good shout of picking up a medal. He, uh, he recently won a World Cup event as well on the ring, so we know he's in very good shape. Mm. Um, I think this ring's fine. A lot of it is going to come down to who can stick the dismount and who takes a step. So very, very tiny details in that ring's final. While you were saying that you don't miss your gymnastics, do you wish that you were in the European floor final this year? Um, probably not. Again, <laughs> <laughs> again it's, you know, it's, it's, it is a, a sport that is very, very tough to do. And competing at this level, I appreciate all the hard work that they've yeah. got to to get to this point, to get to those finals. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite happy sitting here and talking about it as oh, opposed yeah. to being out there competing. Well, let's have a look at the top eight gymnasts uh, from qualifying. These who will be competing in the floor final. Uh, sadly, no Dominic Cunningham uh, from Great Britain. He is the, uh, the current champion uh, out with a leg in. Injury. Uh, Dolga Pyatt, he's the highest qualified. Great to see Shatilov in there at 32 years old and a gymnast that you're looking forward to seeing again. He did so well yesterday in the all-around competition at Dalla Loyan. Oh, he, he really is one of those gymnasts where he hasn't got a weak event and so to get to see him again now he'll be competing. He's going to be not just physically tired but probably a little bit mentally tired as well going into the apparatus finals today. But floor we know it's all about sticking those landings and he's uh, just an expert as is the rest of the Russian team in uh, in sticking those landings. Well Artem Dol Dolga Payet he is the highest qualifier as well I mean the level of difficulty you alluded to you know not being in there just because of the the, the level of difficulty these days but um, yeah I mean superb difficulty and an incredible gymnast on floor. Absolutely and
and I think over the years now he's a gymnast everyone could see there was a, definitely a lot of potential into uh, into the future but perhaps consistency held him back a little bit and I think now he's got that experience competing in these different finals not quite so erratic with his tumbling as he perhaps was a few years ago and he's really starting to settle now into a real expert and a, a strong mm -hmm. contender for medal not just at Europeans but also on the world championship level as well and, and just quickly Beth a word on what the judges are looking for you know as a floor world champion yourself um, in, in the ideal men's floor routine yeah they're going to be looking for huge obviously tumbles some of these lads um, are going to be performing triple back so mm. that's obviously amazing then they're going to be looking for obviously those landings that Christians talks about making sure that there's no steps um, but they're going to be jam-packed with uh, lots of different tumbles they've got to have double somersaults twisting somersaults connecting somersaults so yeah it's going to be an interesting final well let's sit back uh, be thankful that some of us aren't competing <laughs> and just enjoy the men's floor final with Christine Still and Craig Heath Next onto the floor representing Israel will be Artem Doglepayat. Silver in 2017 in the World Championships and a silver in the Europeans in 2018. And watch carefully this big opening tumble. Oh, double front somersault with one and a half twist, but he bounced out. Very nice control on that second huge tumble. Double twisting, double back. He's so aware of where his body is in the air. We call it spatial awareness. He's so aware in space. Wow. Huge twisting combination. If you can link two very difficult tumbles together like that. You'll be getting bonuses. And he's really shown us wonderful tumbling, both forwards and backwards. And what a stylish gymnast as well. Held the legs beautifully straight. Quick look across to check the time. Here's the bell. This will be the final tumble. Needs another big one, double front. A full twisting, double back. He goes half in, double front with a half out. Just that little bounce out at the beginning, but great performance there. He posted a difficulty score of 6.4 in qualification. Well, I like this routine a lot. It has a bit of everything, but this is the opening tumble. The double front somersault with the one and a half twist, just a little edge out the floor. So pick up a line penalty there, but you can see there. Maybe point three, both feet were out. But then some of the other tumbles there, the double twist and double back in the tuck position. Super height, spots the floor. And as you said, Christine, beautiful spatial awareness there. Plenty of time. Judges are looking for the position of the feet on landing. Must click those heels together. And that's the final tumble. Score comes in. Dog a Pyatt. 14.9. With a point one penalty. Didn't say that, Craig. Just a point one penalty there. Only one foot out. So eight gymnasts in this final. We've seen two. This is the third from Switzerland, Benjamin Gisard. Qualified in third spot for this final. Big opening tumble, straight front, two and a half twist. favours the forward tumble again, double front somersault with a half turn and can go backwards equally as good double twisting double back for good measure beautiful control there connecting the double twist to the straight front half turn and again so precise on the landings 
This is where gymnasts normally rack up deductions, little hops, but so far, Guichard is going extremely well. There, precise on the double twist. Slight glance there at the clock. Can he finish strong? Stands up for the triple twist. Well, I think that will definitely lay a challenge. It was a drift from the leaders on difficulty. Six as opposed to the top one with six five. But he certainly didn't give anything away. launches up into the double front somersault with the half turn cleverly jumps out of the landing because he was rotating backwards a little bit but he covered it up very well indeed this the uh, non-acrobatic element the gymnasts have to include that but it was a very clean routine he's an experienced gymnast and showed it very much here linking those difficult twists together off he launches up arms flare out to make that secure landing you have to lift up wrap in bring them out to land you can often say to young gymnasts the arms are like a parachute they come you down as you land but you have to take them up to set up this is the final tumble the triple twist just the step back you could see nicely round those feet he's a happy chap there score comes in 14.5 for Guichard into second European champion back in 2013 for Israel is Alexander Shatilov and has consistently been a medalist at the Europeans. And that's how you land a double pike front somersault. A tall gymnast has to be very efficient. Just a little step. The judges will deduct point one from that 10 points for execution. Oh, he used every centimetre of the floor area there to squeeze in that double twisting double back. The one and a half to the full, three somersaults in a row. You have to generate speed through the tumble. Lovely style on the double twist. And actually, Shatilov competed in the all-around competition. He won himself a place for the final, but withdrew in favor of a day's rest so that he could be at his best here for the floor. He's been good so far. This he needs to nail. Full twisting double back and nail, he does. Bends the legs to land, snaps the heels together. A very strong performance for a medal there. Well, using every ounce of experience. Impressive opening tumble. The handspring into the double pike from somersault. Real variety and repertoire of skills. Almost looked like he landed on a bit of a, a straight leg there, did well to recover. But not only multiple twists, but multiple somersaults with twist, double twisting, double bike. Right on the line there. Before the judges to decide, did his heel go out? I think he just kept it in, Craig. I think he did. The oldest competitor by far in this floor final, 32 years of age. An impressive last tumble as well. Full twisting double back. And score comes in. Shatilov, 14.366. Puts him into third place so far. Well, difficulty down on qualification. Only a 5-7. 
So Dmitry Lankin from Russia. He's the gymnast who's kept the all-around champion Nagorny out of this floor final. Only two people per country. And uh, Nagorny, although he won last night, was the third highest of the Russians in qualification. So this is Dmitry Lankin's big moment here. Prepare to be entertained. Straight into a triple back somersault opening tumble. And again, wraps in the twist there with that connection. One acrobatic element to another that builds the difficulty. Ball from a round off and wraps in again there. Beautiful control, out with the double twist in the straight front. Connection there, makes it look so easy on the floor. Lifts into the Japanese handstand. Hell parts must be two seconds. Got to finish the routine. Stands up into the triple twist. What a solid performance from Dmitry Lankin. Well, this routine had uh, everything. He shows us such variety of skills. Look at this, three double backs and just a three somersaults, a triple back. But then he goes back and does this fantastic three and a half twist into full twisting straight front. He really can mix it up. He can twist unbelievably. That's a four twist. That's a quad twist. Just imagine how fixed your body needs to be to know where you are when doing all these multiple twists. So that's how he builds this difficulty and his difficulty score was 6.5 in qualification. If he's credited with all those skills, that's what it'll be again. If you think the previous gymnast was a 5.7, he's taking 0.7 in difficulty above the gymnast that went before him. So he can't quite manage to cope with a fall, but he can with a bit of an error, an odd step. And 14.8 only gives him the, eight, uh, the second position, a 0.1 penalty. So actually it was out, Craig, just that 0.1 out, and it puts him into second position. Next up on floor, fifth in the all around for Turkey is Ahmet Onda. A beautifully stylish gymnast. Double straight somersault with twist. Really performs with style. Legs are always tightened together. Lovely twisting series there. All these gymnasts are so well prepared. Double twisting, double back. They make everything look so easy. It's only the tiniest of errors that separates them. And really how many twists or how many somersaults they can link together to get these precious bonus points. Oh, was that a little step back? Because that was on a relatively straightforward skill. Lovely control in the handstand hours of practice not only of the dynamic skills but the ability to balance here it comes it's been a great routine so far full twisting double back but that was a little bit flat and low 
one of the few gymnasts that did the all around as well and he looks just a little bit tired after competing yesterday as well fifth all around in the men's competition yesterday so an impressive result already such a powerful gymnast there's the opening tumble double twisting double back in the straight position the force through the ankles and the legs on takeoff and landing double twist into the straight front half turn no problem with that tumble at all we've certainly been impressed by these Turkish gymnasts in these championships they're connected into the straight from full twist managed to stay inside the floor there the question is i think this is what we thought was the relatively easier pass in one and a half one and a half maybe he stayed in as long as his foot doesn't go over the line and final tumble full twist in double back and chest down but three days of competition maybe starting to take its toll for some of these all around competitors and there's the score 14.1 no penalty but execution was down with the big step on that final tumble puts him in fifth at the moment so after dalaloyan second all around yesterday watch this very impressive Binds the two elements. Powers into the straight front, into the double bike front somersault. Judges are looking for no leg separation on the elements there. You see he clicks the heels together. This routine is packed with difficulty, no problem there. in second place so if we can match the qualification score we could go into the lead showing his ability in splits Japanese handstand must be held for two seconds a little bit of a wobble there final tumble Stands up, triple twist all the way around. Well, for me, that's the best floor routine we've seen so far. She agrees as well. I was going to say that, Craig, absolutely. Me as well. That was the crispest routine. And, you know, he, he, I read an interview with him last night saying that the silver medal he got yesterday he was thrilled with. He worked clean both competitions and he was absolutely delighted to have done that. And this was pretty immaculate work. That natural style. His legs never falter. Doesn't have to rush fast. He's got such wonderful technique. Such awareness of where the floor is and where he is in the air. Each landing, the floor never hits him, he lands on it. Bends the knees at exactly the right moment. And it's a very fast paced routine. So he can really put lots in. Of course, the men add their best, their most difficult 10 moves to create their difficulty score. Hugely strong. Wraps in so well for that triple twist. Little bounce back was probably the only little bounce out of any tumble. And 15.1, the judges agreed with us as well. The only 15 we've seen so far in this floor final. A 6-2 difficulty, but it was his execution that gave it to him. Puts him in the lead. Final competitor in this European floor final representing Spain is Radelet Zapata. 
very exciting, dynamic performer. Little hop into that double front somersault. And handspring double pike from with half out. Another gymnast who lands so well. The double front with the half turn out. He's favoured very much the forward movement. Here comes the backwards. Oh, and a little bound on the landing there. He's got a very unusual technique into his round off, but this is a routine that's bounding with energy. In the past, his problem has been controlling the energy, keeping the concentration right to the end. Very good twisting series. We've seen now great twisting as rotating. Everybody willing him into this big tumble. Double straight to finish. Step just about inside. That was a very exciting routine, but I think there'll just be a couple of steps on landing that keep him out the medals. I don't know what you think, Craig. Yeah, I think so, Christine. The, the bounce back on one of the tumbles, and I think probably his heel went over that line as well, which will be a point one. But you know what? Such an exciting performer. Very heavy at the start on the forward elements. As you say, this unusual technique into the handspring with the high hurdle step. But opt-in, there you can see, for the double front somersaults with the half turn. And this is obviously a lot easier uh, to spot the floor and the landing. There again, the double front somersault with half turn. Judges can deduct if they think the chest is too far down. They want to see the chest upright. See, that's where his chest was down a little bit and he got a kickback from the floor. So that could be a point three. Such a powerful, dynamic gymnast. And score comes in for Ridley Zapata, 14.466. So then few little bounces, kept him out the medals, Christine. They did indeed, but it's been a great final. So here's the confirmation, Della Lyon takes the gold medal this time on floor. Dol Kabayat for Israel, the silver, and Dmitry Lankin for Russia, the bronze. A great floor final. And he'll be absolutely over the moon with that gold. The best he's got uh, in the floor final is a bronze. But, uh, yeah, it's a very exclusive club, that 15, just getting over there. We're going to see quite a few, obviously, with the specialists today. But these days, so, so difficult to get to that magical 15, Christian. Oh, it is. And I think when you watch those floor routines, especially Dalloyne, he was just so precise and so he just compact with yeah. those tumbles and he's able just to uh, spot the floor with his spatial awareness. Really just does not give anything away to the judges and when you've got that level of difficulty yeah. and aesthetically he's very good to watch as well. So he, again, the execution is uh, as good as it's going to get. It, it really is uh, just a joy and pleasure to watch him on the floor. Yeah, and as a floor champion yourself then, I mean, how do you construct a routine? Because obviously you want to be working with the code in the way that, you, you know, the moves that you can do best, but how do you actually go about, you know, the, the choreography and the style of it, if you like? Well, again, I think a lot of it is if you're perhaps implementing a new skill into your routine, generally you'll, you'll want that towards the, uh, the start of it, so you're a little bit more fresh. Mm -hmm. um, you also want to try and work the skills that you feel a little bit more comfortable with, perhaps the skills that you find easily, easier to stick the landings of. So there's lots and lots of different, I guess, tactics that you can try and implement and bring on board to mm -hmm. construct your routine. But then to go out there and actually do it in the competition in an event final is very, very yeah. different to training. Well, maybe you can talk about this between you because Dimitri Lankin, um, he executed the triple back here. Now, how do you work up to doing a triple back? Yeah, and also um, during apparatus finals, Whoa! it's so high, his spatial awareness to be able to perform that. But yeah. they will have had a couple of hours warm up on that floor area. Then they will have had to go into a back gym and then come straight out and perform it. So he wouldn't have had maybe a touch on that floor for over an hour 
before he gets to do it. So um, they will have had to train that at their, their home gyms to get used to be able to just do it and doing it cold, which yeah. is, that's a sort of technique in itself. Yeah, and people always ask, how springy is the floor, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's got a lot of springs in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the, the floors have dramatically improved over yeah. the years and, and the yeah. new, the different kit suppliers. Um, so they are moving with the times as well as far as helping the gymnasts so that they can keep pushing the, the boundaries and pushing mm -hmm. the limits of the sport so we get to see fantastic work like the triple back. Yeah, well, um, one piece where uh, technology has really moved on is vault, really. And these days, it's, it's more of a table, isn't it, for the, for the safety of the sport. We can yeah. see the top eight gymnasts that are going to be competing in the, in the vault final uh, very shortly. But let's just have a little chat about Ellie Downey, um, who well, she's the highest qualifier so far. So, um, you know, she's obviously got high hopes for a medal, got a medal yesterday. Yeah, I mean, she's a very powerful vaulter. She always has been since a young age. And she's had the double twist now for a long time. So she's very, very comfortable performing it. And her second vault, she's been performing that for a couple of years. We know she is training harder vaults back in the gym, but obviously having had such a tough couple of years with injury, it's great to see her back out there. I mean, this is her um, all-around vault, and it set her off to such a good start to the competition. The block that she gets, mm. she wraps in, her legs are locked together, she has time to open out and see that landing and that's what the judges are looking for and it's directly down the middle so a high 14 for that. Well uh, two times silver medalist uh, at the Europeans as far as vault is concerned. Uh, here is who she's up against. Um, let's have a little rundown. Here we go so Maria Paseca two times world champion um, and European champion as well. Uh, Taja Bellic as well, the second highest qualifier, and Ellie's going to round things off there. So, yeah, let's just have a word, if we can, on Maria Paseca as two-time world champion, European champion as well. Um, and she's going to risk a lot, um, bearing in mind what she did in qualification. Yeah, so she has got the highest difficulty that she performed in qualification compared to the rest of the field. But we know in qualification she did have problems. This is um, a previous competition, and she just gets such high block the spatial awareness to know exactly where that landing is but unfortunately in qualification here on the first fault she just didn't get enough block and landed very low and had to go down onto her hands and knees so it'll be interesting today having no warm-up will she be able to perfect that and also uh, Colleen uh, de Villard is worth a mention as well. She herself is a European champion 2017, so she's going to be in the mix. Yeah, so she's come through the ranks. In the qualification, she had a great first vault. She actually performed a slightly easier second vault, so whether she'll up the difficulty for finals, which we would expect her to, um, maybe she was just playing safe for qualification. And quite a lot of gymnasts do do that. They, they play the game just to get into the final and then up yeah. the difficulty. Well, they're going to run the vault alongside the men's pommel horse competition. Um, of course, Max Whitlock has qualified for this and since he's become a dad, his whole perspective on gymnastics has changed. Coming here is, is it a bit different for you because you had a bit of a major life event in February, didn't you, with the arrival yeah. of your daughter? Yeah. Yeah, it is very, very different. I mean, this whole phase is a bit of a learning phase for me. Becoming a dad is the most amazing thing in the world and your priorities change massively. She is at the forefront of everything that I do. I think it helps me in the sense that it takes the pressure off me a little bit. You know, the pressure has ramped up in the last three years uh, immensely and uh, that's very hard for any athlete to deal with. You know, going to the World Championships last year and getting a silver wasn't seen as a huge success, which for me is an amazing point uh, to where I've got to because unless I come out of gold, it's not successful, um, which is amazing, but it's difficult. Having a baby does put it all into perspective in terms of relaxing in competitions and you know thinking just again what my mindset has always been but even more so just going out there trying to chill try and enjoy it and um, you know I'm very proud to achieve more than I could ever imagine that I could have. You know you could quite easily have just come here and done pommel you've done high bar as well I mean there must be a, a bigger picture here is it something to do with Tokyo maybe doing more pieces for the team? Yeah, I wanted to do. I want to build up to four pieces by the end of the year for World Championships. I want to be ready on floor pummel, pivot and high bar. And um, pivot and high bar for the reason being that it can help the team. It can be a solid backup. 
We saw you doing the pommel and you top qualifying again. You must be really happy with that. Yeah, I am. I am really happy. I'm really happy with the score as well because for me it wasn't it wasn't a perfect routine. I split my legs at the beginning. So hopefully that shows that I can, you know, get back in the training gym and be be ready and prepared for final. So hopefully I can up that score even more and hit my sort of where my target score really is. Is there anything different about your routine these days? Yeah, so over the last sort of three years I have been changing my routine like quite a lot. Um, and it's basically due to learning um, from mistakes in previous years. So, and learning what the judges, what I think they want to see. You know, I was doing a lot of skills where I'd done one skill at the Commonwealth Games and they took nine tenths deduction off of one skill, which is crazy. So I took that out, swapped it and changed it for a new one. So I have got a couple of new ones in there, which is difficult, but now I'm at a point where nothing's changing my pummel. So I'm. Uh, Staying in that routine, trying to build consistent, consistency, confidence and everything like that. So I'm happy with where I am. I'm happy I put the time in on those three years to get it to that point as well. Well, the daddy of the pommel horse will be up very shortly, but he can, I mean, he says he sticks with his routine, Christian, but he can fluctuate his difficulty a little bit, can't he? He can, and that's what's so unique, I guess, about Max and the way he constructs his routine. He can add difficulty throughout the routine as he goes along, and yeah. I guess I've been fortunate enough to see him train and compete over the years, and there really isn't, well, not that I can think of, any skills that he cannot do on the pommel horse. So when he's taking a skill out, he's putting in a new one, it's... I mean, obviously, that makes it a lot, uh, uh, well, definitely a lot easier for him. But at the same time, he's now talked about he has to start sticking with one routine, building yeah. that consistency, leading up to Tokyo. So the judges are more aware of what he's doing. They're used to, I guess, even knowing what sort of score roughly he's going to be scoring. And, and for me, if he can start laying down some of those, uh, down those uh, sort of benchmarks of what he potentially could be scoring, that's going to put him in good yeah. stead moving forward for the future. Obviously, hugely successful on the world stage, but it's been a bit quirky, his kind of European career, hasn't it, Beth? Yeah, it was um, quite interesting when you put in his results together. I mean, he's double Olympic champion, double world champion, but actually, when it comes to the Europeans, he's won one, one European title on this piece yeah. of apparatus, and it was a few years ago I think yeah. like he talks about he's always got a bigger picture so he tries routines early on in the season and then if there's mistakes there he knows he's got time to kind of work on it yeah. ready for the world championships or Olympic Games he's had a couple of illnesses when it's been European so mm -hmm. um, yeah no it's great that he's now starting to think about that consistency and um, yeah. we've seen him in the past few comps uh, in domestically performing really well. Well, the current champion, Reese McClenaghan uh, from Northern Ireland, isn't here, but here, uh, who is in the, in the top eight, there they are for you. Uh, Max will be up uh, third. Uh, there you go. And Nikita Nagorne, the all-round champion from yesterday, is in there. Bryn Bevan, who we've mentioned as well from Great Britain, and uh, Oleg Vanayev will wrap things up. And uh, he was um, the all-around champion before he lost the title uh, yesterday. He didn't, didn't compete in the all-around, so he's, he's looking at being more of a specialist, Christian. Well, yeah. He's been injured, hasn't he? Yeah, potentially there's that. And uh, as you say, he has had a few injuries, particularly since Rio, I guess. And I believe he's had more surgery to try and, uh, I guess, bring himself back into the all-around pitch but he obviously wasn't quite ready for the all-around yet, so just sticking with pom horse and parallel bars. And I believe from not too much uh, preparation, he's managed to make finals in both those. So that just shows the calibre of athlete Absolutely. he is. And once he's back to full fitness, I'm looking forward to seeing and seeing what he can bring to the, uh, the gymnastics world again. Well, I just reminded Max will be third up. Let's see how he gets on in the men's pommel horse final with Christine Still and Craig Heap. So from Turkey... Ferret Arakan starts this pommel horse final. Straight into the single leg work on the end of the horse. And the double leg circles on the one handle to build the difficult tech. Judges looking for extension of the hips above the apparatus into handstand there. Little hesitation on the Busnari down into the flares. Got good extension on the circles, but must lock the knees and the feet together. Backward travel there. Come on, losing momentum a little bit. Pirouettes. Well, a few points there. Judges would have taken a few tenths, but he's got through. Solid start.
Yes, one of the gymnasts who was also in the all-around final yesterday. And Craig was right, a little bit untidy around the legs. On to the vault, first up representing Russia, Angelina Melnikova, silver medalist on vault in 2018. And in the vault final, the gymnasts have to do two different vaults. This is her first and her favoured vault. The flip on, straight body shape off with double twist. We called you Yushchenko after the first gymnast who performed it. And that's the vault she uses in competition regularly. Yep. Backflip onto the top of the vaulting platform, wraps in. Actually a lot better than she did in the all-around final. She was a little bit off to one side yesterday, but seems to have rectified that. More in line, judges will be looking for any deductions around the leg separation, crossing of the legs, hop back on landing. A good solid start. That's the average of both vaults. That make the final score. She has to wait for the first score to come out before she can uh, produce the second vault you can see the 5.2 it's going to be easier score comes in 14.333 for Melnikova's first vault <laughs> presents for her second vault it has to be a different approach she can't flip backwards on generally the vault she would have trained less she makes the turn on and that actually was a very nicely performed second vault she does the round off onto the board makes a half turn in the flip a straight front somersault with a half turn and Farat Ar Arakan scores 13 8 6 6 he's ranked one because he's the only one who's performed yet so far on pommels So, Vadislav Polishova, first European Championships, and uh, he's obviously a bit of a specialist for the Russian team on the pommel horse. Qualified in second spot for this apparatus final. Straight into the single leg work. Good extension there in the hips and leg separation. Nice turn on the one handle into the flares and spindle. Up into the handstand again in flare, back down, keeps the momentum. That's good work on the Busnari skill. Travelling the horse in the flare. Nice separating the legs. Upgrades the difficulty. Up into the handstand, pirouette. Well, that was a great performance. You can see why he qualified in second place. And you can see why he's been brought as a specialist on this apparatus. Lovely style, lovely extension right through the feet. Light frame. Very well suited to the pommel horse. Quick with all the movements. He did that extremely well. There was no pause or hesitation second bolt score comes in for Melnikova 13.933 gives a 14.133 average and into first spot so far next up representing Russia is Maria Paseka Olympic silver medalist in 2016 and bronze medalist in 2012. And she's nominated a vault with a tariff of six. Very difficult. Oh, and she has a big step to the side, but she got the feet down first. 
This is the front somersault with one and a half twists, and it's the number of twists that give the extra tariff to it. There you can see the round off with the half twist into the handspring position. Quite scrappy in the legs from the springboard. See this here. Separation there, that's deducted. And you can see the bent legs there, chest right down, steps to the side. And it just goes to prove, actually, on vault, is it worth doing something a little bit easier and doing it cleaner with less execution faults? Well, we will see. There were She didn't put her hands down. That's about all you can say for that vault. But it was very untidy right from the top. She was European champion in 2015. You can see she's got the highest difficulty by nearly a full mark over the rest of the field on this piece of apparatus. And she will pick up heavy deductions. You can see there the second vault, 5.8. Score comes in, 14.2 for the first vault, 8.5 on execution. Well, that's a big score. She knows if she lands this vault, which is another very difficult vault, she'll be difficult to beat. Lots of focus. Gets the speed down the runway, the flip on, the big two and a half twist. Now that was a beautiful vault. Very confident. We've seen lots of double twists, but no two and a halves in this women's championship so far. And 14.6 for Polyashov, a good score there. But this is the man, the most decorated gymnast in the competition, Olympic champion on the pommel horse, Max Whitlock. bit short on that first handstand must show the position it settles in to the work on one handle that builds the difficulty and the turns around Stockley's into the handstand back down keeps the momentum good now breaks into the flares in the Magyar and spindling on the way back Slight change to the routine, the way it's been constructed. You travel backwards, the woo into the triple rushing on the end of the horse, up into the handstand. Pirouettes, no turn there. Wow, what a performance! Well, by far the most difficult routine in qualification. And it was clean, beautifully executed. He's got such pace and rhythm on the pommel horse. Sort of almost floats above it. Much improved. Score comes in for Paseca. Second vault, 14.833. Gives a massive 14.516. Puts her into top spot. That will be a score that'll be tough to beat. Next up for Romania, 17 years of age, is Denisa Golgotta. Very dynamic tumbler and vaulter. Super high on the double twist. Very clean execution. But the, turn, the double twist is quite considerably lower tariff than the two and a half. Quite a small gymnast, but extremely powerful, as Christine said. Good on the floor, good on the vault. There you can see, wraps in for the double twist. Right bang down the middle, that's what the judges are looking for. Twist well in the air. 5.4 on difficulty. So that means the most she could score if she was perfect was 15.4. It should score well in the 14s. Yes, I think it will be. The question will be 
what's the second vault because these gymnasts generally in competition just do one vault so the first vault is the one they practice a lot so 14.5 for that first vault that's a very good score for the double twisting yashenko one of the top scores we've seen so far and it was because it was so clean and tidy this is also a vault marked out of 5.4 Needs to be clean. Full twisting, Sukahara. Actually, they'd left up 5.4, but that's a 4.8 start score. So not so difficult, but again, very clean. Fantastic score for Max Whitlock, 15.533. I believe that's the highest score we've seen in the competition so far in this championships. Cyril Thomason, hugely experienced gymnast from France. Lots of medals, but not, uh, lots of finals, should I say, but never medaled at a European championship. Very stylish gymnast. France have had a long tradition of good pommel horse work. He's got good extension of the circles, and by that I mean clearest clearance above the apparatus works the one handle there that builds the difficulty legs locked out feet together traveling forwards down the horse and backwards and again with the turn into the Russian Wendy circle on the end he's going well so far no problem on the pirouette, well, maybe this is his championships to get the first European medal. Always stylish, lovely control. Pommel horse is a piece of apparatus that the gymnasts seem to be able to improve and improve on vastly with experience and age not so punishing as the tumbling and vaulting. Lovely control. Second vault score for Golgotta, 13.733. Gives her a total of 14.116 into third spot so far. Lovely clean vaulting. Next up, representing Italy, is Asia De Amateo, junior European champion back in 2018. Very powerful gymnast, lifts up, very nice, double twist, tiny bit offline. And actually, I do think when she hit the floor, the feet weren't completely cleanly round. So twin sister. Alice, it was fourth in the all-around competition last night. You can see here, nice in the air. But I think I agree with you, Christine, not fully round on that double twist, and the judges will pick up on that, even though it was in line. And good flight and height. Yeah, the gymnast must get the body all the way around the twist. I think they'll credit her with the double twist, but I think that there'll be a deduction for the feet not right round. You see most of the double twisting Yachenko score in the 14s in this championship. <laughs> see where the start value, if that's correct. And the difficulty for the second vault of 5.2. A reasonable second vault. Score comes in 14.3 for the first vault for De Mateo.
So, as with the others, a different second vault makes the round off the half turn. The front somersault with a half turn out. That was a very nice vault, actually. A little bit offline. It's a difficult vault to do. There's lots of turning in it. You turn on and you turn off. But good, good body shape. Fourteen point eight for Cyril Thomas, and that's an excellent score. Six two difficulty, eight six for execution. He'll be uh, happy with that. So Nikita Nagorny, we saw him win the all-around competition yesterday afternoon. Can he add to his medal tally? Gymnast. Did well to stay on there in that very difficult skill on the one handle. It's got a nice rhythm and tempo about this routine. Keeps the momentum going. Just lock the knees, the feet together like he does. Travelling forwards down the horse, known as the Magyar and backwards in the Javado. No hesitation on the pirouette. Well, he might have had three days, third day of competition, but he looks every bit the champion. He's so strong and purposeful in his performance. As we said yesterday, he doesn't look like pommels should be his piece. He's powerful, strong for rings and tumbling and vault, but he swings really well. And he's such a naturally stylish type of gymnast that he really doesn't give many marks away. Efficient. Second vault score, 14.166. That's an average of 14.233 for Asia De Matteo of Italy. Well, they're performing well, these gymnasts on vault. Next up, Teja Balak of Slovenia. Oh, very difficult full twisting front vault. She needs lots of power down the runway to drive the heels over for that. But she's quite a vault specialist and uh, often is figuring in vault finals. I don't think she's medalled at European level. But here you see handspring, hands on, snaps the body up, full twist. It was a deep landing. But most of the gymnasts use the flip on. This is the more traditional style of vaulting where the hands go in. You push off the hands to get the somersault up into the air. She really did very well to hold on to that landing. She was leaning right back when her feet came into the floor. Yes, yeah, she's been in many European vault finals, but never have managed to medal 13.933 for this first vault so she'll need to pick it up for the second one see there's a maximum vault run you're allowed the marker shows you're not allowed to go any further back she couldn't have got any further back here's the flip on Oh, the one and a half twist, and she just didn't quite have enough air time, enough push off the top to make that one and a half twist before the floor came and hit her. Disappointment there. It's not going to be a medal in this championships either. But for Nagorni, 14.466, and it's not going to be another medal for him either. Fourth position. Well, made a bit of history for Cyprus in the all-round. Coming third. This one of his favourite apparatus. 
Straight into the scissor work. Picks up into the double leg circle. And this is where he's good for this piece of apparatus. Just look at the extension in the hips. We're looking for a straight line over the piece of apparatus. Knees and feet locked together. Up into the handstand, back down into the... Oh, what a shame. Just about to say, back down into the flare on that Busnari skill. So we'll lose one full mark. And Marius Giorgio has really sort of wowed us this championships, hasn't he? But uh, probably a very tired young man having qualified, then walked, worked all six pieces yesterday. Back onto the apparatus. He's got to finish. Breaks into the flares. That's good separation of the legs, forwards and backwards. Shoulders need to be square with the horse when they travel it upwards. Pirouettes. Well, what a shame, but he'll not be disappointed with this championship. Bronze medal in the all-around, but not for the pommel horse today. Well, I guess there's the highs and lows of gymnastics. There have been plenty of celebrating in the camp from Cyprus last night. Bronze all around is a significant feat. And really, he has got a lovely style on the pommel horse. Really can swing his body in great shape. Second vault for Teja Balak, 12.566. Gives an average of 13.249 into fifth place. Next up, representing Hungary, Sarah Peter. And this her first major final in a major championships. Oh, super double twist. A bit of an unusual technique. Really blocked well and wrapped that twist in. You can see, flips on, almost like a bit of a turn on the way on in the hands, you can see maybe here, there she starts twisting as she hits the top of the platform, uh, did well to control, it stayed well within the lines, just 16 years of age, good strong vault for an opener Christine. It is, but the judges, um, it's one of the things they have been looking for if there's any turn onto the platform, so there'll be a little deduction for that, but it was very nice high vaulting so she uh, although she'll have a bit of a deduction for her e-score that it still should be quite impressive score i think some impressive strapping as well 9.133 on execution 14.533 that's a great score for that vault but a four six difficulty for this next one what are we seeing? Handspring pike front somersault with half out. Another lovely flighty vault. But whereas from the first gymnast we saw that with one and a half twist, just with the half twist, the tariff is quite a bit lower. But very nice clean vaulting there. And another British competitor, Bryn Bevan, member of the 2016 Olympic team. Straight into handstand, hits the position, no problem. Works the one handle well, keeps the feet glued together. Got to keep the momentum on this piece of apparatus. And he's swinging well so far, up into the handstand. A little bit of a hesitation, come on, well done. Breaks into the flare, travelling sideways and forwards down the horse and backwards. Up into the handstand, pirouette. Well, he did well not to fall off there. There will be a bit of a deduction for using strength during the routine, but uh, better to take a deduction than the fall. Well done, Bryn. Yes, well done, Bryn, from South Essex Gymnastic Club, coached by 
Scott Han, who's also the coach of Max Whitlock, so he's really producing some fantastic pommel horse work. And although it was a bit of a fight in the middle, it had great virtuosity and flair, this routine. And this isn't Bryn's only final, so we'll see more of him. Second vault score for Sarah Peter, 13.6, gives her an average of 14.066. And we've just seen the back of Colleen de Villiard of France. Well, hopefully we'll see it in the replay. She uh, was 2017 European vault champion. But uh, whether she went early or the cameras were just slow getting across, She's a very, she's a tiny little gymnast, but very dynamic. And here we see it. It's handspring on, front one and a half twist, and very, very nicely performed. Beautiful direction, lovely lift, legs tighten together, arms flare out to make the landing. A big step backwards, which will be a deduction, but very precise vaulting. First score comes in, 14.8. Great on execution, nine. Prepares for a second vault, looks like she's up the difficulty slightly from qualification to a 5.4. So here we go, second vault, Colleen de Villiard of France. Everything to play for here. Lots of speed and power, flips on. She gets the double twist in, little step over the line, but it was a massive vault. And those were two very strong vaults. There's the flip on, big push, double twist. Oh, actually, she landed one foot out, so that should be a point three penalty. It's one thing if you step out, but if you land out, you can see, actually, she was offline from the flip. But two big, strong vaults there. I thought the first vault was absolutely fantastic. So much height off the top of the platform. So Bryn Bevan, 13.4, ranked six. Deductions for the pause in the middle. Well, Oleg Venayev, the star of the Ukraine, Olympic champion on the parallel bars he's had a fair bit of injury a couple of operations since we last saw him but here qualified for the pommel horse for final at the europeans straight into handstand quite a traditional start and round on the sawn skill up into the handstand got to keep the momentum going back down into the single leg work to the double leg circle he needs to really push out the hips and extend the circle great to see Vanaya back shoulders not really as square as they could be on that backward travel but working well come on oh and such a shame you could hear the coach shouting go 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 The, mem see, the momentum think. overtook him really, Craig, didn't it? I think so, the shoulders, because you're turning down the horses travelling, you've got to keep your shoulders pushing forwards, but also be able to put the brakes on at the end of the, the travel, and unfortunately, just lost a little bit of control. Back onto the pommel, just for the dismount. No problem on the pirouette. Well, not to be his day-to-day, -day, Oleg Vanayev, but great to see him back. So this is a very important score waiting for. Is it going to challenge for the top spot? 14.1 for the second vault score. Gives an average of 14.45 into silver medal position with one competitor to go. So Paseca remains on the top spot. Picked up silver in the all-round competition. Now on vault representing Great Britain, it's Ellie Downey. And this her favoured vault, 
Sky high double twist, just a hop backwards. She's not got quite so much difficulty in the second vault, so she needs it, knows it needs to be perfectly executed. And you see her there with her coach, Joe Miller. Really suits this piece of apparatus. to such a powerful, dynamic gymnast. Look, you can see the concentration on the face. Twists absolutely perfect. Not many gymnasts, what we've seen, uh, land bang down the middle like that. And I'm sure in the gym there's an extra half turn on its way for Tokyo. Yes, she's got quite a lot of work in the pipeline. She's had a year of injury, so she's had to come back steadily, performing work that she knows she can do. She'll be hoping to pick scores up for execution, for the great execution. And score comes in, 14.4. You're right, Christine, nine on execution. That's a cracking opening vault. So Ellie from uh, Nottingham Gymnastic Club. This is her only final. She was absolutely fantastic yesterday to take the silver medal all around. Needs to be faultless on this vault. The half on the lovely straight body shape with a half turn. And it was pretty near faultless. Now, her difficulty score is lower. But will the beautiful execution manage to get her up into the medals? Well, I think it will. I don't think it might. It's not just good enough to take gold, but I think it will definitely put push for a podium finish. Let's have a look again here. I think that Ellie's got better as this competition's gone on. Look at this round off, half turn, perfect timing. And again, slap bang in the middle. She gives herself so much time in the air. Now for bronze, there we 13.2 for Vanayev, the fall very costly but I don't think he would have challenged for the medals. I thought that was early down this score then, I was panicking. And third place average is 14.23. You can see Max Whitlock has done it again. Wonder Whitlock, European champion on the pommel horse for 2019. It's got a good ring to it. Fantastic performance from Max. He's had his ups and downs the last few years. Oh, wait nervously for this score. Anything over 14.233. As the announcer in the audience says. Score comes in, the second vault, 14.233. That's an average of 14.316. Ellie Downey picks up bronze on the vault. And you can see the delight on her face. Silver last night, bronze today. Wonderful to see her back performing at her best. Confirmation of the Pommel Horse final results. Gold goes to Max Whitlock of Great Britain. Silver to Cyril Thomason of France. And bronze to Vladislav Polislav of Russia. The women's vault see Maria Paseka achieve the gold medal she came here for for Russia. Colleen de Villiard taking the silver and Ellie Downey, Great Britain, the bronze medal. Well, Ellie, another day, another medal, this time a bronze. How does that feel? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I had like the lowest start by using the comp, so I had to like just go clean and do my job. And it was nice that I was up last. I didn't 
tried not to watch anyone before me, but I kind of knew from the reaction that um, the Russian was in the lead and then obviously the French girl, she had the biggest start value, so I knew she was on her feet. She was going to go above me, but yeah, very happy. You mentioned you didn't have the highest start value, but you did have very, very high execution, and that was commented on by our commentary team back at base. I mean, is that something that you're really working at to be as clean as possible? Uh, I think just my vaults have always been quite clean and uh, the difficulty is still pretty up there but it's just not as big as the two that were ahead of me and um, so I knew that if I just did them how I know I can then I would have just gotten the medals which I did so and your work here is over sum up the championships for us um I'm quite sad it's over actually it's gone really really fast that like, each day is just whizzed by um, but yeah I'm very happy with my performances uh, I couldn't have asked for more two medals so yeah and I think we know that you've got upgrades to put into some of your pieces like like bars, etc. Will we perhaps see them come World Championships time? Uh, yeah, hopefully. I'm looking to put in more upgrades as like, Worlds is a big one for us this year and we really want to go out there and qualify our team. So, Ellie, thanks very much. Really well done this week. Thank you. Well, Bryn, uh, not quite your day-to-day. -day. Tell us uh, what went out. Sorry. <laughs> Bryn, not quite your day-to-day. -day. Tell us what happened out there. Uh, I had a little mistake halfway through my routine, um, which resulted in one of the skills not getting counted, so my start score's a little bit lower. So my overall score is a bit lower as well, but um, I was just happy to be out here, be in the final, my first seen Europeans. Um, I think a lot of people, like, sort of, since injuries and stuff, were starting to doubt me. I was starting to doubt myself as well, but I'm back here, and I've proved it to myself and everybody else. And you're not finished yet. We'll see you again tomorrow in Parallel Bars. Yeah, still Parallel Bars final. Um, I'm hoping to improve from my score from qualifications. Uh, fingers crossed. And uh, we saw Max Whitlock, a man you know very well. You trained with him at South Essex. An incredible score today. What's it like watching him up close and personal in South Essex every day? Um, for me, because I train with him and see him every day, it's not like... I'm not sort of starstruck by it, but to be able to sort of train alongside him and sort of replicate the, the work rate, being able to sort of have as many turns as him, try and do the same skills as him in the gym. If I can keep up with the work that Max is putting out, then hopefully I can be a bomber medalist one day as well. Thanks, Ben. All the best for tomorrow. Thank you. Max, European champion, how does that sound? That sounds really good. It's a huge relief for me. I'm really happy, you know, like I spoke about before the competition. The build-up was a huge learning curve for me, just becoming a dad. So it was an exciting one, but a learning curve. So I feel like today has given me so much confidence. It's been a huge confidence boost and a huge experience boost as well. So I'm looking forward to going on from here. Do you feel you've now got that sort of monkey off your back? Because it's 2017, the last time we saw you winning an yeah. international gold. And, yeah. and you, you know, you have felt the pressure, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I have. I'm, I wouldn't lie about that. I'm very honest in that the pressure's ramped up massively. And obviously, with last year not going fully to plan, the pressure just ramped up even more and more. You know, every interview was talking about the silver medal um, that I won last year. So that was difficult, but I'm very happy to come away from here as a gold. I've always said, you know, I've learned so much from last year and I need to sort of build on that. And um, I'm really happy to sort of prove that today and hopefully I can keep it going like this. And what a performance, a big, big, big performance to win there. Yeah, I'm, what I'm most happy about is, is obviously doing my routine the way I wanted to, but obviously scoring my, near my target score. So I can go back now and sort of know that I can score that now and keep working on it and, um, and look forward to sort of World Championships coming up at the end of the year. Is there bigger and better to come from you in terms of difficulty and execution and scores? I can up my difficulty more than that, yeah. I've got that, that I need to sort of practice more in the gym. It wouldn't have been ready for this competition, but um, knowing that I've got that in the back is, is really helpful. Um, now I can increase that difficulty a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's just about cleaning up even more. There was a few bits in there that I would like a bit tidier, um, so less deduction, and, and that's something I can work on now. And now I'm sure you're desperate to get home and show your medal to Leah, yeah. your wife, and, and Willie, your, your new daughter. I can't wait to get home. I mean, I've been away for, it must be like six days now or seven days, and it feels like forever. So, yeah, I can't wait to get home, and it feels even better going home with a gold medal. But we've obviously got some more finals for the boys, so I'm looking forward to watching them. Max, many congratulations, and, and good luck getting home and showing the medal yeah. to the, the family. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. 2019 European champion on the pommel horse is Max Whitlock from Great Britain. Trains at South Essex Gymnastic Club, coached by Scott Hahn. Been a great pommel horse competition, this Christine. Yes, yeah, so and Max really has posted a very emphatic score today. Top score we've seen in this competition so far. And uh, he's really put himself right back on the top of pommel horse work.
Well, I know he'd look at the construction of his routine and made some changes, but you're right there. It was an emphatic win by 0.7 between first and second place. That's got to be the, the largest gap in this championship. And uh, I'm sure all the uh, Chinese and Japanese people will be looking at these uh, performances, thinking of the World Championships and the Olympics in 18 months. The 2019 European champion on the pommel horse from Great Britain, Max Whitlock. Silver to France, Cyril Thomason. And the bronze goes to Russia, Vladislav Polyaslov. And Bryn Bevan from Great Britain finishes in six. And bizarrely, every winner is given a banana at these championships, <laughs> but just to replenish the energy, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, Max Whitlock there, uh, yet again European champion. It's been a while since he was European champion. Last time was 2014. Um, but I mean, talk about streets ahead, 0.73 ahead of second Cyril Thomason, which is a, an enormous score as far as Bommelos is concerned. It really is. And it's quite significant, to be honest. I mean, we're not talking just, uh, a, you know, a domestic championships here. We're talking the European championships. And for him to be so far ahead at this stage, that really has laid a benchmark for the rest of the field, the rest of the, uh, the pommel horse workers throughout the world. And for me, watching this routine, OK, he's a little bit short on the handstand if you want to be super, super critical, but this is probably one of the best routines I've seen him do in a long, long time here. He upped the difficulty on that skill, yeah. the three Russians, as opposed to uh, the two that he did in qualification. But you can see he just looked steady, looked smooth, he looked composed from start to finish. All his hand placements were exactly where he needed. Legs jammed together throughout and then even the flare elements as well, he adding this, uh, the spindle travel into his, uh, his routine. It's, it's definitely just made it that little bit more of a standout routine so the judges will sort of know and, and respect Max for this sort of difficulty work that he's putting in now. So yeah. it really is exciting to see. And, you know, he talks about upping the difficulty again in the locker. And we couldn't believe crazy. that. <laughs> really is crazy to think that. But as I mentioned earlier, I've seen him train and there really isn't much he cannot do on that piece of equipment. Mm. So the world is his oyster, really. It's just about finding that level, finding that routine that he's comfortable with, competing on a regular basis, and then getting it out there for the rest of the world to see. Well, and that is the point, because he said how happy he was and actually how satisfied he was that he managed to just actually, you know, show the world what he could do with that routine. And, and the message of that, you know, 15, 5, 3, 3, to put that up out there. Yeah, and it is a huge score. I mean, mm. even domestically, sometimes when people are scoring that, they'll say, well, it's at home. Yeah. But I think Christians really alluded to it, the fact that it's on a European level, people are going to be watching that. Yeah, actually, what does that mean from a gymnastic perspective then? When you, you know your, your major competitors, when you would hear or see them post a score like that on the world yeah, stage? Yeah, if it was on the world or Europeans or a major championship, you kind of go, actually, yeah, fair play to them. That is the score that we need to start looking at and start beating. And Max is just constantly up in his game. I mean, he talked about earlier about keeping a consistent routine, but mm -hmm. we know like he's just said there is more in the bank so it's it's finding that sort of level of do I go with more risk yes. and go down with the execution the great thing is sometimes we've seen him go up in the difficulty and the execution has been down but actually today yeah. Like Christian, I thought that's one of his cleanest routines I've seen in a long time. And also just learning to cope with that expectation. You know, when you're a double Olympic, double world champion, everyone's like, oh, yeah, OK, let's watch you, see what you can see. But actually to be remain calm, to go up there and just keep delivering. Um, you know, that, that's been a big part of realisation for Max, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. And it's, it's a skill within itself, you know, not just the, the physical preparation, but the mental preparation then he has to take into all of these uh, big competitions. That's difficult and that, and that will definitely weigh on his shoulders. But 
you know, he's a professional, he's been doing this many, many years now. We can see he's just going out there. Looks like he's enjoying it as well. Uh, for me personally, I really like the structure of that routine. And I, I think he's, uh, he's definitely going to be uh, setting the world on fire again on the pommel horse. As, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing what he has and uh, what he can bring for the World Championships yeah. towards the end of the year. That could well be score of this championships, couldn't it? 15-5-3-3, beat that if you can. Uh, now, um, Ellie Downey has taken the women's m medal tally up to two. They're both hers. Um, she got a silver yesterday and uh, a bronze today. Um, we're just going to have a little look at her uh, vault. Here we go. Yeah, so um, we know that she consistently performs the um, double twist, but this is her second vault, which for most gymnasts, the second vault, you don't perform it as often, you don't necessarily train as it much. But Ellie's, for some people, they would love to have that as a first vault, let alone a second vault, which has got so much height on it, so much precision, and just uh, the execution is high. And she speaks about that, actually. She knew that other gymnasts had higher yeah, difficulties, yeah. but she knew she could perform them cleanly. Um, and it is hard. She was going up last, obviously. She knew that the French girl was just before her mm -hmm. um, and had that... Ex um, difficulty advantage but um, she said I can only do what I do. Yeah but I mean and actually mentally what a championships this has been for Ellie if she knew there's maybe only one medal to go for she's absolutely got to execute it in the best possible way to stand. You've got two vaults to do as well so it's not an all or nothing. <laughs> yeah and I always thought that with vault final as well if you do a particularly good first vault as well it almost adds a little bit more pressure on you going into the second, second one yeah. and again that's a big learning experience a big learning curve and uh, okay she's been in quite a few vault finals now but she also hasn't been competing probably consistently um, sort of over the past 12 months so to see her back out there at her best performing consistently and doing it very very well and picking up medals along the way then that's just absolutely great for her the women's program and British gymnastics. Well let's have a look at the vaults that put Ellie under that pressure. Uh, first up Caroline de Villard from France she got the silver medal. Yeah so um, we're going to see here her first vault which is so high and very well executed. Oh, the handspring the with a one and a half twist. To be able to stay down that line is um, it's just pure class. Um, we know with the second vault she played safe in qualification. In um, finals she did go for the more difficult double twist which she can tell is not quite um, as consistent. She was out the lines but because she had that difficulty um, advantage over Ellie that's what held her into the second position. And that's the real challenge as you know Christine for any vaulter to actually have the the, the different entry to the vault so you can't just be really good at one kind of vault mate. well exactly and that's what's difficult you know you're, you're I guess effectively you're training another piece of apparatus the fact that you've got not one vault but two vaults yeah. and if you're yeah. doing that on top of all around for example that's an extra bit of workload that you've really got to not just sort of be blase about you've got to work at that you've got to train hard at that you've got to make that vault consistent and and getting that sort of right training program and mind space to be able to switch between the two mm -hmm. um, and then also again if they want to maybe change the vault for the final again that's mixing it up even more so it takes a long time to get that sort of level and that sort of experience to be able to play that safe and and to do it in a way where you're consistent with it and performing it well at a, a major championships yeah well you uh, tipped the leader the champion Mar maria Paseca over breakfast this morning uh, <laughs> let's have a look at what she put on offer because you said after qualification if she could if she could do better then whoa yeah i mean she always had the advantage with the difficulty but unfortunately um, um, that first ball wasn't necessarily executed as well as she'd hoped, but this second one, um, she knew exactly where that landing was. But that first one, it's only because she had that difficulty um, advantage because yes. there was a huge execu execution scores um, with that. I mean, the step out, legs were apart, hands were down, everything was kind of all over the show. So she'll have a lot of work to do with that leading up to the World Championships to uh medal on the world stage. Yeah, and Christian, you were the master of landing a vault. I mean, we relied on it to win Olympic medals. <laughs> um, and the key with a really good landing as far as the vault is concerned, it's not necessarily just about putting your feet down. It comes from the block, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. It's, I always thought vault, it's a, bit, a little bit like a domino effect. You have to get the run-up right. Then you have to get the approach right. You have to get the contact right. Then you have to get what you do in the air, so the somersault or the twist, and then it's the landing. If you so, sort of mess one of those um, sections up, then that's going to have an effect onto the... The, uh, the end result which is ultimately the landing so for me it is a, a sort of step-by-step -step process um, you can't really be thinking too much about what you've got to do at the end you want to be keeping it fairly simple and you're standing there and you just presented and you see the green lights I mean for me I would just think right 
start with my left foot for the run up because if I got that wrong then the rest of it would be completely uh, a disaster so really? for me I just try to keep it as simple as possible and again that's just little things that gymnasts will have little their own unique sort of feel and twist on on how they just keep themselves calm and composed for yeah. situations like this. Did you uh, ever feel the need to uh, focus and work on rings as a specialist, piece of apparatus? Not particularly, to be <laughs> honest. Um, it wasn't my favourite, shall we say. Uh, and again, I, I, just, I can appreciate just what those rings guys do Gosh, to get yeah. that level of strength and to be competing in this final. And European level has always been very, very good on the rings. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's, you know, as we talked about earlier, it's just minuscule marks and differences between the ring guys. It's all about sticking that dismount. So it's uh, always an exciting final to watch. It is mind-boggling sometimes, isn't it, Beth, just to see that show of strength. It is the show of strength, but like Christian said, it's the fact that it is fractions of marks that are separating maybe between one and six. I mean, yeah. I think the bottom four gymnasts all scored 14-6 in qualification to come into this final. So, yeah, the fact that you you can literally wobble a, a one foot or one leg and that's your, that's your medal gone. Well, let's have a look at the top eight from uh, qualification. Starting things off is former European champion Denis Abliazin and then uh, Marco... Ladadio, he's the third highest qualifier. Radovilov is in there as well. Courtney Tullock's up fifth. And Davyatan as well, the second highest qualifier. Um, we've actually had a word, David McDade has had a word with Courtney Tullock, and this is what he had to say after qualification. You've had a few silvers and bronzes. Um, how far away do you think you are from, from getting on the top and getting the gold? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Um, training's going well. I've, I've improved my dismount, so my start value on rings is, is, is really high. Um, but it, it is a routine that I, am, I can do and I'm more than capable of doing. Um, but in the past, my, some of my downfall has been um, that I've not been the cleanest or performed it the best of my ability. So I'm working really hard on um, execution, trying to be holding the skills for as long as possible and being a bit cleaner and I've got a new dismount so I'll gain a couple of attempts um, not piking down and the landings are improving so them things hopefully will pay off out there and um, we'll see how that goes. We will see how it goes. Uh, Dennis Abliazin is that we love watching Dennis Abliazin. He's such a classy gymnast anyway, and you're looking forward to seeing what he can do in this final, Chris. Definitely. He's sort of been out the pitch for a little while, actually, this sort of past 12, 18 months. And we know that he's predominantly a rings and a vault specialist, highly decorated Olympic world, European medalist on those apparatus. So to see him back now and performing at a high standard, he's, he's definitely the one who I've, I've got my eye on. I'm thinking if he can put in a good performance here, then that's going to you know, put him in good stead to make the world champion team later on in the year and then again start pushing for the places in the Russian team for Tokyo. OK, well, this uh, final is going to be running alongside that of the uneven bars final two. Uh, Beth, no British interest in this. Quite unusual. It is. Um, we've not obviously not had someone in the final for a while. I mean, the girls did great in qualification. A couple of their routines were maybe training, fighting routines, and it was a few tenths that they were off. I mean, mm. Amelie was actually reserved for it, so we were very close to it. But um, obviously, we've got um, finals on every other piece of apparatus, which is great for us. Yeah, um, Angelina Melnikova uh, is competing in this final. She's certainly going to be one to beat. She is, and she's had a great championship so far, and then also the Russians are are well known for this piece of apparatus. Obviously, no Mustafina here, who's kind of been their be uh, bars queen, um, but they've got a new up-and-coming star, Ilyankova. Yeah. Um, so we don't know a massive amount about her, but obviously to be in a final, we know that she's got the potential to yeah. to be up there with the top. You're and, looking um, forward to seeing that. I am, actually, because it's always interesting, the year out from Olympics, who... Some countries just start throwing sort of new young faces into the mm. mix to see can they cope under pressure, how does their routine score and I spoke to Christian about it, there's been quite a, new, a lot of new faces at this European Championships, whether it was on the men's or the women's side. Yeah, we spoke about it yesterday, it's actually a very interesting time within the Olympic cycle isn't it, with gymnasts looking forward, obviously qualification at the World Championships, but the Olympics in the world of a gymnast, it's not that far away. It's not at all. When you're building these routines. No, it really isn't, and, and these sort of championships are the, the sort of the milestones and the stepping stones that the gymnasts need to start testing out these new routines. They, the governing bodies and the sports, they need to start sending out teams that they think 
might be in potential for Tokyo, get those gymnasts exposed to that high pressurized environment mm. um, so that they can start building that all in readiness for the Tokyo and the, uh, the big Summer Olympic Games. OK, well, just a reminder, rings and uneven bars are going to be running back to back here. We're going to start with uh, rings. Chris, you haven't got long to it. Abliazan is up first. Here's Christine Still and Craig Heath. First gymnast on the rings for Russia, Denis Abliazin. Hugely experienced gymnast and hugely strong gymnast. Olympic bronze in 2016. Look at that. Circles round to the Maltese position. And again, look at that. Flat with the shoulders, level with the rings. Got a swing, the double front in the tuck and pike position, back up rise to the straight top planche. And again, circle round to the crucifix. Again, kip. Got a swing to handstand. No problem there, locks out. Judges looking for a nice straight line from hands to toes. Backward long swing. Needs a good dismount and it's a big double twist in, double straight. Dennis Abliazin kicks off this rings final. Well, he was European champion back in 2013 on the rings. He's given a strong challenge to be the champion in 2019. Look at that straight body line. Superb strength. And you know he can swing as well. And that's the trick. You swing to an immediate strength hold. First up. And the uneven bars representing Sweden. It's Luana Adlertek. Well, the top qualifier and full of beautiful, exciting work. The clear circle into the Kachev, the somersault over the bar, but she didn't link that first two elements. She had to take another upstart handstand into the Paxalto. Here she goes back up to the high bar and then the Paxalto with the full turn. L super handstand shape. And that was clean into a full pirouette. She had to fight a little bit, but a good, strong, Stolder Kachev, a hop, have to swing in a forward grip. That was just an easy forward giant. And she winds up now into the double straight. Lovely dismount, it floated. But her difficulty score will be affected by those first two elements not joining. It's a good routine. Others will have to be better, but she's opened the door a tiny bit. You see there, connecting the full turn into the straddle Kachev. So that gets the connection. silver medalist in the last European Championships on this piece of apparatus. Big dismount, a double straight. So Abliaz in 14.966. Top of the tree at the moment. So Samir Aitzad from France, they've already picked up one medal on the pommel horse. And this man's capable on the rings as well. Yeah, medalled in many European championships. And look at the strength there. Circles straight round into the top planche. Lowers down to hang through the crucifix. Press to the Maltese position. And again, swing to the top planche. One of the requirements, swing to strength. Gymnast must also swing to handstand, lock out the rings and swinging elements. The double pike, double tuck, back up right straight to the Maltese position. When gymnasts link these strength elements, swinging elements, that adds the difficulty. It's an open-ended part of the routine. Execution from 10. 
Needs a good dismount. Full twist in, double back straight. That was a great routine, and he knows it. And European champion all the way back in 2013. So we're really seeing a battle of champions here. See, opens the hands to show how easy and in control he is. Hugely strong. And again, links those elements. Score comes in for Joanna Adlerteg. 14.3. Next up for France, 17 years of age, Loretta Sharpie. Starts with the flight from the low bar to the high with a half turn, quite a difficult element. And now her forward element, the Jaeger somersault in the pike position. The catch air, and she'll go immediately down to the low bar with the pack salto. Very good so far, and another half turn up to the high bar. Very well rehearsed, precise routine this. Toe full pirouette, up into the full twisting double back dismount. That is very clean, and she performed it just the same last evening for the bars final. She's very efficient gymnast on the bars. Now you can see the Jaeger somersault, front somersault, a little bit close to the bar. So that'll pick a slight deduction, but that was good. The height and the flight there. The Shap with a half turn. Gymnasts have got to transfer from the low to the high bar. So Samir Adsaed, 14.733. Second behind Abliazin, doesn't look delighted with the score. Davchian from Armenia. Strong on the start there. Into the Maltese position. Actually, it's Arta Tovmasian. Swings well into the handstand. Nice straight line. And that's good height in the multiple somersault straight to the Maltese position. And again, back up rise to the straight top planche. A little bit soft in the back there. Full twist in double straight. Takes a little step on landing. He doesn't look happy with that at all, Christine. No, my apologies to gymnasts from Armenia in the rings final, which is a great comment on their programme. But he never quite settled. And the dismount was a bit of a rush. Score comes in, 14.1, you see the difficulty, 5.7, puts her into second place. <laughs> Just seeing her sister on the vault. Next up on the bars for Italy, 16 years of age, Alice De Matteo. Another uh, gymnast who competed in the all-around competition fourth last night. Lovely start, Shaposhnikova uprise into Kachev. And now important link, the Kachev, and immediately back up to the high bar. That was excellent. But she has a shuffle along the bar in order to get into the center for these invert swings. And there we see an invert with a full turn, very nice, immediately into the double front. It's a short, punchy routine, that. And she really doesn't give very much away there with her coach from Italy. Delightful work. Well, it's great, the transition between the skills. Now you can see the Kachev into the pack salto. Stolder with the sharp half, so all connected. Doesn't need any extra wasted swings and 
any chance of an extra swing required is generally a deduction. So if you can connect those skills together. So Tom Verson, 14.7 into third place. It wasn't such a terrible routine after all. So Nikita Nagorny, all around champion of Europe, crowned last night. Fourth on rings at the last Europeans. Absolutely perfect position in the Maltese. Can control the rings and again into the crucifix. So the gymnast must hold these strength elements for two seconds. But got to be able to swing and this is what he can do well. Double pike, double tuck, the front somersault known as the homna into the crucifix. Swing to strength, back up rise into the straddle top planche. Gymnast must swing to handstand, which he does. Backwards and again forwards. It's going well. Good dismount. Double twist in, double back. Sticks the lander in. Well, you can see the difference in his face when he finishes that routine to the previous competitor. He thoroughly enjoyed that. And he's a gymnast you really do feel engaged with. He enjoys his performance. He's thrilled with himself. And he really makes, draws you into the competition, doesn't he? But real strong guy. I think you probably have to pump yourself up a bit, don't you, Craig, to perform on rings? Well, it is certainly one of those pieces of apparatus that you definitely need all the strength. Don't forget this young man. This is his third day of competition. And... Uh, it, does, it looks like he could do another three days, to be honest, Christine. And we were chatting about how fit and solid this Russian team is. Yeah, they're very strong. Score comes in, 14.4. Good routine. Alice De Matteo of Italy moves into first place. It really was a very good punchy routine. Now we move on to the current European all-round champion. Crowned last night onto the uneven bars from France. It's Melanie de Jesus de Santos. And always a little bit difficult to perform apparatus finals straight after a great success. That's a lovely stoop in and out into the Shaposhny cover. But she had to fight for that. A lovely catch of action though. Didn't join straight into the pack salto, but she's got such rhythm on this bars and such extension through the legs, elbows locked straight all the time. That stoop in and out she's used. That's the third time she's used it. You can only use one skill three times. So she's used it to its maximum. Here comes the dismount, lifts up high, adds the full twist, just a little pace, but such classy work from De Santos. She always looks a little underwhelmed with herself. Uh, it was a big night last night. Not just for her, but for France as well. Taking that all-round title. But yeah, she's so exciting to watch. Such a dynamic gymnast. The height and flight she gets on the releases, the transitions between the bars, locks out in the handstand. There you go, the half turn into the inverted grip. Checks the bar again, turns around, back into invert, top change. This is a big dismount. Probably the only one that we've seen in this championship. The double straight with the full twist. Had to take a little adjustment on the landing. But another great routine. But you know, it's so difficult to, to add your difficulty up. She only has a 5-7 start. So Nagorni into second place, 14.9. <laughs> I don't think anyone doubts that he's thrilled with that. To be honest, I don't think he's that bothered, Christine. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> but that was a fabulous routine. That dismount as well leaves that lasting impression with the judges. I think rings can be all down to the dismount some of the time. And now Courtney Taller, Great Britain, 
steps up to the rings. Lifted up by coach. Yanuts, Chanda Budu, and Pegasus Gymnastic Club. Super start there. That's actually his move, the Tulloch. Presses into the Maltese. That is a perfect position. Plays out into the swinging elements, straight into the handstand. He knows he'll have to perform well if he wants to get onto the podium. That there is so impressive. Shoulders level with the rings. Back up rise into the Maltese. He's got a big dismount. Double twisting, double straight if he does it. In the tuck position. That was a great routine. Well done, Courtney. Think? Well done, Courtney. Another delighted performer. Very compact gymnast. He's made two finals here. He's in the vault final as well. Lovely finish to the routine. The double twist in the double tuck. He's really raised his level these last couple of years. Score comes in for Melanie de Santos, 13.766. Just good enough to get into the medals today. Yes, I think to medal today, you've got to make all those links. And just that little bit of a handstand where she had to fight, I think might have cost her. Bronze medalist night last night in the all-round competition for Russia. It's Angelina Melnikova. Now she needs this full pirouette into immediate Shaposhnikova. She makes it straight back down again and straight back up again. And that's probably why she didn't get a higher medal yesterday. She didn't link them, but today she's gone for broke. Oh, that was fingertips on the front somersault, the Jaeger. The half turn, now the full turn, very nice, immediately into the dismount. I think that will medal today. She went for everything and really delighted to see, because last night she was just a bit edgy and uh, didn't really go for the connections. In a final, you know you've got to go for broke. You certainly have, especially when the gymnast before put in such great routines. See the courts there just hovering under the top bar, they're allowed to be there as long as they don't touch the gymnast. Locks out in the handstand. There's a stoop half turn. Straight into the Jaeger. And that was a, a fingertip catch, but you want to catch on straight arms. And stoop in the full turn and connect straight into the dismount. Double back with the full twist. Yeah, I think you could be right, Christine. I think that might just be good enough for a medal. And Courtney, 14.766, lying in third position. For Italy, Marco Lodadio. Of course, Italy, a great history of fantastic ring workers. In your day, Craig Yuri Kecki. He was the man. But this is the man of the moment for Italy. Took a bronze medal in the World Championships last year. Good position to start off with in the Maltese and again. Lay out into the swinging part of the routine. Finishes with the front somersault to crucifix the Homma. That's a good position there, the top planche. Arms have to be straight and circles round to another crucifix, known as the Azarian. Swings into the handstand, locks out. Qualified in third place. Needs a good dismount, double twisting, double back. Ladadio, is he the daddy-o today? 
Mm. Well, he's certainly delighted. The rings final is always a huge final. The guys are really quite consistent on this apparatus, aren't they, Craig? They certainly are. And actually, for the rest of the ring workers, his frame doesn't look as big as some of those, but he's incredibly strong. It's deceptive how strong this young man is. Very deceptive. In fact, I was quite taken by surprise, the level of routine. I think the only part there was a little bit of loss of legs on the multiple somersaults between the rings, especially on the tuck, uh, knees apart, but the rest of it. And that dismount actually was a bit of a cross between a, a tuck, a pike and a straight, <laughs> I think, Christine. But you pretty nailed it, didn't he? It'll be very tight. We're the score, Melnikova. Can she pick up another medal of the championships? Yes, she can. 14.533. Angelina Melnikova moves into top spot. Fantastic for her. Next up on bars, just 15 years of age, representing Belarus is Anastasia. Alice Stratova. And the first gymnast from Belarus we've seen in this final. Super stoop in and out with the full pirouette. It's considered the most difficult of the close bar elements. That time she put the feet on, which makes it a lot easier. Good transfer from the high bar down to the low and back up to the high bar. Very clean and efficient on that chap half. Lovely half turn, a huge front somersault. She looks a very confident and competent gymnast here. Just the swing turn right into handstand. Lovely straight arms on the Giants. Very clean, strong double front with a half turn. That was a very pretty bar routine. Not very much given away at all and beautiful lines. It's a big routine for such a young gymnast, just 15 years of age. You can really see the potential in that routine. She just takes out a few of those uh, long swings in between and can connect this routine. But that was absolutely super there. Feet and legs locked together. Locks out in the handstand. You can see the extension down the legs. There you go. Into the forward long swing position and the double front somersault with half turn. Just that slight step on the landing. Good routine. 14, 9, 6, 6, up into second position. Wow, that is an impressive score. I think that took Nikita Nagorny by a bit of surprise there. And Abliasin. <laughs> Igor Radivilov from the Ukraine. One of the most decorated gymnasts. European champion back in 2013. Been in many a ring final at this level. You can see why. Straight round into the top planche. Lower down, watch this now. And again, press to the Maltese position. Kip to the crucifix. If anything, a little bit high there. The judges could take a tenth. Such strength. You can see the position holds the rings well. Good in the flighted element. Straight round to the inverted crucifix. And swings again to the Maltese. So difficult to split these gymnast strength. Needs a good solid dismount. Winds up, kicks in, double twisting, double back, and hands down. Well, he qualified in top spot, but that error on the dismount, that's a full mark. Disappointing for Raddy Vilov. Yes, ran out of a bit of steam and quite a surprise, actually. All the strength work, immaculate.
so Abliazin holds top spot. I said he was a European champion in 2013, Abliazin, but he wasn't. He was actually European champion 2014. And he's not going to be unseated from that position by Radi Vilov today. Score comes in for Anastasia Alistratava. 14.366. It's great to see some different names at the top here. And into third spot. Absolutely fantastic from the 15 year old. Two gymnasts still to go. So representing the Netherlands, Sana Berman. First we've seen of this gymnast in finals. Had a big score in qualification. The flight up to the high bar with the full turn down to the low bar. Lost a little bit of rhythm on the catch. And a little bit untidy during the legs. Oh, and she went for the big connection, putting the feet on. And uh, that's what happens if you don't quite get enough of the foot on. It's quite a challenge to try and get your feet straight on from the pack salto. Yeah. You can see she flies up to the high bar, then she flies back down to the low bar, and then she puts her feet on, but she was just a bit too late and only got one foot on. In a final like this, you have to go for it. One whole mark off, and she loses the value of the move she was trying, but really floats a good high front somersault there. Bit of a late pirouette into a full twisting double back. Well, it didn't quite work today, but she was ambitious and full of heart. Sometimes it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Such a shame, actually, because we've seen some good bar work from this young lady. Lovely height there on the front somersault above the bar. See, just went for broke on the connection. And obviously, it just didn't work. Into the dismount, full twisting double back. So, Radivilov, 13.933. That one whole mark, keeping him out the medals. The mark he lost for the dismount. So Van Davtian from Armenia, second Armenian gymnast in this final. And the oldest, 30 years of age. Been in rings finals going back to 2014. His best was a silver in 2016. Can he do better today? Presses straight into the top planche. And circles into the Maltese. That's a good position. Kip to the crucifix. Release grip on the rings to show his strength. Into the swinging element. The double pipe front salt up. Straight to the Maltese position. Again, back up rise into the crucifix. A little bit of a flicker there and movement in the hips. Judges will pick up for that. Needs a good dismount. Full twist in double back in the straight position. Well, qualified in second place. I think it was good, but it be good enough. Well, we've seen a few surprises here. Just 
gradually got the feet there. You have to swing and move straight to the final strength position. If you sort of pause and hover on the way, they're little deductions the judges make. So they'll have to have a good, strong look at this. But the difficulties there, all of these gymnasts have very similar difficulty level. Score comes in for Sanna Veerman of the Netherlands, 12.366. Puts her in seventh position. <laughs> Final competitor on the air bars representing Russia is Anastasia Ilyenkova. The Russians renowned for ta fantastic bar work and there's the clear circle into the Stoop Kachev. And now in the straddle with a half turn into the edge of Earth, two very difficult elements linked. Flight from one bar to the next, back down and straight back up again with the half turn. Real good, confident work here. Super pirouette into a very efficient dismount. That will be a challenge for a medal as well. Everybody's quite on fire today. We're seeing some fantastic uneven bar work. Junior European champion in 2016 on this piece of apparatus. And they've really got a clever construction of routine, the Russian girls, on this piece of apparatus. Not wasting any swings, very difficult there. Catch Ev with the half turn down to the low bar. You can see, look at that, locks out well in handstand. Stole the shot to the top bar. And this was nice. The stoop into the full turn and connects straight into the dismount. A little bonus point for those two elements linked together. And she needs more than 14.533 to go first. So, Daviatin, 14.933. It's a third spot, and is it an equal third spot? We'll wait to be confirmed. Score comes in, Ilian Korba, 14.833, moves into first place. That's gold and silver for Russia on the bars. So confirmation of the European champion on rings for Russia is Denis Abliazin. Italy get the silver with Marco Ladadio and Armenia. Van Davitan takes the bronze. On uneven bars, Anastasia Elienkova first for Russia and second for Russia, Angelina Melnikova with Alice Damateo for Italy taking their first medal of this championships. Well, Beth, you said you were looking forward to seeing Ilian Kova. You said that not a lot of people knew a lot about her, but she certainly made a mark here in that final. She has, and what a great way to start kind of her senior um, career. I mean, her routine is jam-packed, full of difficulty and huge releases um, using big connections. And mm -hmm. you can see that it's a working routine as well. There's still uh, room for more connections. It reminded um, me of one of your routines, <laughs> to be fair, though. No, it was a long time ago, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, all of her skills are connected, so that's where she's built up the difficulty, but also relies on the execution being a lot higher than the rest of the field. I mean, a 14.8 compared to the rest of them, sort of down at 14.5, 14.3. So she's really sent a message out ready for World Championships and also to the rest of the Russian team that she's there. Yeah, from the younger ones to the more experienced and Denis Abliazin <laughs> at 26. He didn't disappoint, did he? He took the championship there. Look, he's back on top. 2014 was the last time he won this, but um, 
well, he's looking absolutely on song here. He is, and he's also back again tomorrow in the, uh, the vault final. So it's great to see him getting into uh, such good form again. I think there was potentially a few question marks whether he was going to be ready for these, uh, these European Championships. But obviously watching him today, uh, putting out the performance that he did with the big dismounts as well. He, you know, he's, he's definitely gymnastically watched, and I think for him, the big decisions are going to be will he go down the individual qualification route for Tokyo yeah. or potentially try and push his way into the uh, the Russian team, which we know is already jam-packed with just superstars at the minute. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, they've got what, they, what, 10 medals at these championships so far. Yeah, and we were talking about the camaraderie between the teammates. They, they seem really like a close-knit team and mm. they're genuinely pleased for each other if someone else beats them. You saw Mel Nukova, she was sat in first on bars and then the youngster comes through and pushes her into second, but she was celebrating with her, which yeah. is great for their team spirit and can only help the depth, depth and strength of their team. And Dalalain was the routine on floor for you of the championships. It was. It, it just had everything, to be honest. I think when you watch gymnastics... This is exactly what you want. You know, it's exciting, um, it's clean, it, like just everything about it is just, just a gymnast performing at the top, top level. You know, sticks all those tumbles, the execution of the skills, it really is just a masterclass in gymnastics. So for me, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely routine of the day today. And he just, he just seemed to hit every routine. I mean, that's been the magic thing about his championships so far. It has, and I mean, for me, even he was a standout performance. I just... Everything that he he's performing is textbook yeah. performance. It's not a case of, is he going to make it? Everything you know that is 100% solid. Well, we are back uh, at these European Championships with another five finals tomorrow, including Claudia Fragapani's return to the floor final and Alice.